Yes people, what's going on? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. In this video, we're going to be discussing Krasnodar versus Chelsea. We're going to be talking about Chelsea and Krasnodar going into this game and also the future fixtures to worry about as well. As well as team news, prediction, predicted lineup, everything that you're going to want to know about Krasnodar versus Chelsea will be in this video. But before we go into the game, as usual, if you guys haven't done so already, hit that like button and press that subscribe button and give the boy a little bit of support because we are getting closer and closer to 20k even though i'm really chatting out my ass and we're like just crawling at this point but that is why i need you man to subscribe if you haven't done so already because guys the road to 20k has been a lot longer than the road from 10 to 15k was so i need every single one of you man to back it if you ain't done so already like and subscribe hit that bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever we release any new content and yeah let's go straight into krasnodar versus chelsea now Champions League football means no rest for the wicked and for Chelsea this means that we're going to go for a long period of time where we have two or three fixtures within the space of a week and this week is the same as all others. We had Manchester United on the Saturday, we've had a pretty decent break before going into the Wednesday game away at Russia to Krasnodar and then we have a two day break before we have to travel away to Burnley which... I mean, we've had a pretty decent record away at Burnley. It's not too bad, but traveling away to Burnley is also one of the worst away trips in the Premier League. And when you have David Koo as the referee and that egghead, bald-headed waste man, Anthony Taylor on the VAR room duty for our game, it's going to be a madness. And I can already tell this game's going to be one of those frustrating ones, but that is why we need to start our winning run here. Confidence has been... I'd say low low throughout the season, but it's been building up and then dropping down at random periods. We've just struggled for consistency over long periods. The most consistent period we've had, though, has been over the last two games. The 0-0 draw to Sevilla, the 0-0 draw to Manchester United. We are not here glorifying 0-0 draws, but I will glorify two clean sheets because as Chelsea fans, we have not seen clean sheets for, a, for the longest, let alone two clean sheets back-to-back. Sevilla game, I think that we've seen two different Chelsea sides. The Chelsea side before the Sevilla game and the Chelsea sides after the Sevilla game. And Chelsea versus Sevilla, our last Champions League match, ended goalless. We did get dominated for long periods of the game. We struggled with possession and all we, although we did well to regain possession, it was holding on to it. That was the toughest part for us and we kept losing 50-50s. We kept losing second balls and Sevilla kept finding holes in our midfield to try and ping passes around. But the thing with them is they just couldn't find any space in our back line to try and exploit. Only real errors in our back line came from Kurt Zuma, but other than that, it was a very solid performance defensively all round. Going forward, there wasn't really much attacking threat, and we do have to say these two clean sheets have come at the expense of our attacking quality. But Frank Lampard is trying to find the balance of his squad. And with a very good run of fixtures ahead of us, now is the perfect time to build a winning run and to try and instill some confidence into this side. If we take a look at our next six games, we've got Krasnodar away, which is tomorrow, as we know. Then we have Burnley away in the Premier League before we have Rennes at home and Sheffield United at home within the space of next week. Uh, Newcastle away, which is always a tough fixture for us. That's probably going to be the toughest one of the lot before Rennes away, which again is might be a bit of a tough trip, but it's a short trip and it's also a game that we should be winning. The final game in that six-match run is Spurs at home, which if I already said Newcastle away was going to be the hardest one, it is Tottenham. But I am adding Tottenham to this winnable run of games anyway because it's Spurs at home, isn't it? And we already know Tottenham's record at Stamford Bridge. I'm not going to talk too much on it before someone clips me. But when Spurs come to Chelsea, it's usually for a yearly L. So I'm hoping that stays the same for this year too. But just because the games look winnable on paper, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be easy or it's going to be a walkthrough for us anyway. Two away trips in the space of a week, including a trip to Russia and back, is nothing easy for Chelsea to try and break through. We're also probably not going to rotate as enough as we should for the next two games because I do think we need to try and like solidify our starting eleven and then just get them flowing well together because a big issue for us this season has been chemistry and trying to link players together and trying to get players to work and understand each other more, which is why 
I personally wouldn't change the lineup too much over the next few games. We need to find our strongest lineup, we need to stick to it, and we need to have it stand there as our best because that's the only way we're going to have these players understand each other. We've got a good squad, but we've added a lot of new players to it. That gelling period is still in progress. It's not a massive excuse at this point, but it is still a consequence that we do have to try and work around. Also, take into the fact that Krasnodar will be playing possibly one of the biggest games of their history tomorrow. This is the furthest that Krasnodar have got in the Champions League also not gonna lie we're not trying to be too arrogant but we are the biggest team in the group right now and because of that this is probably going to be Krasnodar's biggest game of the season and that means that all of their fans and their players will be up for it I say fans as well because they are going to have a reduced allocation of fans and we ain't gonna have away fans over there either for obvious reasons so they're, they are going to have a little bit of that 12th man Dan that might push them a bit over the edge but we are not going to sit here and start making excuses. Krasnodar is Krasnodar. Even with their strongest 11, there should be a massive golfing class between Chelsea and Krasnodar. Yeah, they might stick everyone behind the ball. Seriously though, we should be breaking them down regardless. But even if that's the case, this isn't the same Krasnodar. Even for Krasnodar's sake, they have so many injuries. I think that I'm already looking at the team news that I'll talk over later. I think there's already six first team players out for them in this match. And their recent form has kind of suffered as a result as well. They've had two wins in their last five. And their last game was a 3-1 home defeat to Spartak Moscow. So there really isn't any reason to go into this game without any, without bags of confidence. Because we should be smashing Krasnodar if we're serious about the Champions League. Hell, if we're serious about getting out of the group stage. Group E is all to play for. We drew 0-0. Krasnodar and Rennes drew 1-1. So right now, nobody's top. We're all level on the same points. This is basically match day one again. We need to make a serious impression on this group and we need to make a statement. And that has to be at Krasnodar's expense. Moving on into the team news. Not too much to talk about on the Chelsea point of view. Kepa may, be, may still be out of a shoulder injury, but he was never really going to start anyway, so that don't mean anything. Billy Gilmore's out for, I think, still about three weeks to four weeks. But other than that, we haven't got any serious injuries. And I think from the sound of it, Hakim Ziyech might finally be back to full fitness and if he is this is the perfect game to start him in because I feel like this is the sort of game where he can be a bit more free-flowing and get some confidence and it'll be his first start for Chelsea he's had three substitute appearances over the last three games and he hasn't really had enough time to stamp his impact or to show exactly what he can bring to the side so I'm very excited to see him play tomorrow for Krasnodar Remy Kabea and I'm oh, sorry if I butchered these names but you're gonna have to bear with me here Evgeny Markov and Remy Kabea have both tested positive for you know what I'm not trying to get demonetized out here so just put two and two together Wanderson and Viktor Kleisson are struggling with muscular problems Ruslan Kambolov and Alexander Chekinov are nursing injuries while Sergi Petrov and Dmitry Stoski are also out so that's about six players already out injured for Krasnodar just going into this match again I'm sorry if I butchered any of those names. You really have to bear with me on these ones. That was a lot. But yeah, the, um, Krasnodar, bear injuries. We should be smashing these regardless. Let's go into my predicted lineup for the game. I'm not going to make too many changes from the last match. We are going to be playing four at the back because we're not playing four at the five at the back against Krasnodar. I mean, Krasnodar are going to be the one that's likely to sit deep against us. So why are we going to play with only three attackers? It don't make sense. So we're going to start, go back to the 4-2-3-1 formation. Mendy goes in goal because nobody else at this point. And having a, bit, a goalkeeper that can do the literal basics is so mad to us right now. So yeah, Mendy starts. Right back, Azpilicueta. I'd rather rest Reese James and have him start the Burnley match because I feel like it's going to be more of the same game as well where they're going to sit deep and play that low block. So you're going to want a right back who's a bit better going forward. So I'd rather have Reese James rested for that match. Kurt Zuma and Thiago Silva players are two starting centre backs because I just want them to get used to playing next to each other and to build that sort of partnership with each other. Ben Chilwell as well plays at left back because we are having no liabilities in this squad. I don't care. Like I won't see Alonso and Emerson unless we have to play Alonso and Emerson. Aspi, second choice left back and I don't care if he's a right back. Um, as the two DMs, we're going to go for the Kovacic and Jorginho pivot because I think N'Golo Kante does need a rest. I would understand if Kante got given this game and maybe got rested for Kovacic for the Burnley game instead. 
because I do think Burnley is going to be a tougher game than Krasnodar is going to be. But I understand if we have the rest of this match. I think N'Golo Kante does need to be dropped at some point regardless because I think his passing range has been holding us back over the last few games. Not to say he's been poor because I know he's had the most interceptions in the league. I know he's had a semi-decent season. He's just been off form. So I do think he needs to take a game or two on the sidelines just to freshen himself up a bit. But we're going to go Kovacic and Jorginho. Callum hudson Adoy on the left because, seriously, if hudson Adoy don't start this game, you might as well just hand in the transfer request at full time because he's been ignored for far too long. I get, I think Pulisic needs to be rested for this match. I would like to see one fresh attacking midfielder for Burnley anyway. So please give hudson Adoy the game time. Um, we'll have Hakim Ziyech on the right as well because it will be his first start and I want to see what he can bring. And the other two, Havertz and Timo Werner, just have to start. It's a Champions League game. We're not top of, the, of our group yet, so I don't see any reason to rotate too much. Score predictions. I'll go 3-0 Chelsea. I mean, yeah, if we can keep clean sheets against United and Sevilla, we really should against Krasnodar. Let's just raise the standards. But yeah, it's got to be a win. It can't be anything else. Guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the points I've made. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the Chelsea.